thank you very much for attending this meeting and I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes, one minute for Mr. Kotler and Levitt to say goodbye and the last words. Yeah, thank you, Orlando. I just want to say that uh, I was the beneficiary of the uh, excellent presentations uh, this evening. Uh, it, you brought together a very inspiring uh, group. I look forward to our continuing to work together in common cause and let us hope uh, that in working uh, together at the end of the day, and let it not be too long because we have to appreciate the urgency of the situation, we will bring justice for the victims and accountability for the violators. So thank you very much for convening us and we will go back to the trenches now and continue our work to secure justice. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kotler. Michael. Sure, let me, uh, I just want to end with, with, with one note. Um, in 2016, the very, one of the very first hearings we had at the Subcommittee for International Human Rights, uh, a committee which is defined by its cooperation and collaboration uh, and its consensus approach, we had a visit from uh, five members of the uh, National Assembly, five members that were uh, coming to see us and then they were going to Washington, D.C. And we heard that testimony. We heard the gut-wrenching testimony of the repression they were facing, the violence, the threats. And, and this is 2016, maybe, maybe February. It was a cold winter's day. And we, we all sat there absolutely um, riveted by the, the horror of what we were hearing. And those Venezuelans, those brave Venezuelan representatives left uh, Ottawa, flew to Washington, D.C., where they testified before Congress. And then they went back to Venezuela. And about three weeks later, um, I got a notice from, uh, from Venezuela, an email, and it told me that several members that had come to speak to us and then gone to speak to representative, representatives in Congress had been arrested and had been beaten. And there was a picture of one of those representatives bruised and beaten. And they were beaten because they dared to share their story with Canadian Parliament and, Parliament and Congress in the United States. And from that moment on, not just I, but all my colleagues from every party on that human rights subcommittee, we knew that this issue had become personal, had become something that we would need to continue advocating for in Canadian Parliament. And we've done that. We've, we've had more representatives come up. We hear from civil society. We hear from the Venezuelan uh, uh, community uh, in Canada. And I can tell you it's something that is uh, going to remain a priority, not just for me, um, but for so many of my colleagues. Uh, and it's because of how personal this became for us that democratically re elected representatives would go home and be tortured and beaten for sharing their stories. Their stories will always remain. They'll remain with us in Canada, and we will continue to stand with the people of Venezuela. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Michael Levitt. Uh, one point is important just to conclude with your intervention. We need to make visible the situation of Venezuela to the Canadians. We know that in the parliament, we receive a lot of support. We receive a lot of, of um, help from Canada government, from NGOs. But we need to extend the situation of Venezuelan people to the Canadian people. And that uh, is an important role that the coalition that we try to, to build throughout this triangle initiative is important as well to make visible this horrendous violation of human rights in Venezuela. Thank you, Mr. Kotler. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Michael, for your support. Um, Thank you. You are, you are a new Venezuelan as well. Thank, Thank you very much. Good night. And now I would like just to start with the uh, we and answer. Uh, before, uh, I would like to, to extend my, my best uh, Greetings and bienvenue, uh, welcome to uh, Philippe Laurence. Philippe Laurence uh, is a conservator, parliamentary of Canada. I would like to make my welcome as well to my colleague Fabiola Sabarce, 
ambassador, Venezuelan ambassador uh, to Panama, Claudio Sandoval, Venezuelan ambassador to Honduras, uh, Maria Teresa Belandria, our beautiful ambassador uh, uh, from Venezuela to Brazil, and Maria Pontes, our ambassador in Belgium. As well, I would like to uh, express my very welcome to Mr. Randy Hovack. Um, as well, Cheryl, of course, Cheryl Urban, you are one of the best in, in, in foreign affairs, and Michael Grant, he, the, the big boss who helped Venezuela, Venezuela uh, any time that he has opportunity. Now, I would like to invite you, and of course, excuse me, the wonderful representation of the diplomatic representation of uh, uh, Colombia, Monica Beltran, the representation of Chile as well, um, Mauricio, uh, uh, Ambassador Alejandro Mauricio, uh, my good friend as well, from Ambassador from Costa Rica, Mauricio Ortiz, <clears throat> and um, now to extend uh, the possibility to exchange some impression uh, for to give you the word to speak with uh, the panelists and to open your uh, opportunity to make some questions uh, just to start with Ben Russell. Ben is one of the best uh, allies in Canada. He's used to be ambassador, uh, Canadian ambassador to uh, Venezuela. Uh, um, for sure, you have the opportunity. Miros Alcalay as well is one of the uh, ex ambassador representative in United Nations. Miros, thank you to be here. And of course, if you want to talk and um, give some questions, we are going to give you the, the right to, to speak with us. And last but not least, because I ran I take my extension to Antonio Marval. Antonio Marval is the president of the legitimate uh, uh, Supreme Court of Venezuela. Antonio, thank you for being here. And it's an honor as well to attend our meeting. Please, Ben, go ahead with your question. Muchísimas gracias, embajador. Uh, es un honor hablar con uh, los representantes de los dos parlamentos en un, una discusión tan importante y urgente, dado la, la crisis que está subiendo uh, el pueblo venezolano. Um, me gustaría felicitar, uh, dar uh, felicidades a Humberto Prado, mi amigo de muchos años, de tantos años en Caracas, un defensor de derechos humanos de uh, una importancia histórica por el informe que ha um, presentado el, uh, Michel Bachelet y a, a nosotros esta, esta noche. El trabajo que hace, que hace Humberto y los demás defensores de los derechos humanos en el territorio venezolano es un, una contribución um, ex, uh, muy importante uh, al debate internacional diplomático y político. Y uh, me da mucha alegría sabiendo que, uh, que está continuando este, eh, este esfuerzo. Uh, es muy importante que siga haciéndolo en el territorio venezolano. Hay muchos valientes defensores de, de derechos humanos que, la, que lo hacen desde muchísimo tiempo. Además, um, creo que una de las fuerzas del movimiento democrático venezolano es justamente el hecho de que todavía trabaja en el territorio venezolano, a pesar de todas las, las amenazas y las dificultades uh, representado como el, uh, con el ataque contra, contra el diputado Armas um, y los, uh, las amenazas contra Humberto y su, uh, y su familia. Um, no creo, no quiero uh, que ustedes um, uh, tengan la, la impresión que no, no valoramos la valentía de lo que ustedes hacen, uh, hacen. Lo que yo quisiera subrayar es la importancia de la presencia en el territorio venezolano, um, la credibilidad y la legitimidad que brinda uh, a su trabajo en el, el contexto de la, de la política internacional. Una de las razones por la cual tantos países se han juntado a... Um, Uh, al movimiento democrático con la recono el reconocimiento de Juan Guaidó como presidente interino uh, 
uh, es justamente porque hay una institución democrática elegida presente en el territorio. Hay muchos movimientos de democráticos en muchos, muchas dictaduras en todo el mundo, pero lo que destaca el de Venezuela es este, esta presencia. Lo subrayo porque creo que con las elecciones parlamentarias que vienen en diciembre y la certeza con la, con la cual uh, serán fraudulentes uh, gracias al control que tiene uh, Maduro en el Consejo Electoral Nacional, me imagino que hay un debate estratégico dentro del movimiento democrático. ¿Qué hacemos uh, después de, de esas elecciones? Uh, y quisiera subrayar la, la importancia de mantener una presencia dentro de la, del país. Es, uh, es importante para el apoyo que nosotros fuera del país podemos, uh, podemos brindar. Así que gracias por su valentía, gracias por su contribución y gracias por la posibilidad de participar con ustedes esta noche. Muchas gracias, eh, Ben, también por tu participación. Quiero también extender saludos a los diputados Carlos Bastardo, al diputado Juan García, del Grupo 16 de Julio, también parlamentarios de la Asamblea Nacional de Venezuela. Está con nosotros también Manuel Avendaño. Manuel, thank you for being here in the representation of the president, Juan Guaidó, right now, even though we are represented of the President Juan Guaidó as well. And now I would like to extend um, the possibility, the right of if um, give up his answer and some question to Cheryl. Cheryl, I don't know if you have some question and I'm sorry not to give you as a first as a lady the, the first time. Please go ahead. Thanks very much. Well, maybe I'll just say a few things, um, because first of all, Ambassador Vera Blanco, I'd like to thank you for organizing this. I have been truly um, impressed with the level of the conversation and with what I've learned. At the same time, I have to say that actually I find the accounts on many of them very disturbing uh, and, and very upsetting to hear. But um, it just makes it all the more important that this is a, I want to underline that this continues to be a very important foreign policy priority for the government of Canada. I myself have been working with our ministry for three years and through that journey there have been many, uh, many things that we have done uh, with our partners, with our important partners in order to address the crisis. And a lot of that is working with our partners in the Lima Group and the Lima Group countries. Um, it was a real treat to be able to hear Erwin Kotler today. And I was very excited because there were a few moments that stick out for me over the past three years where we felt like we really made an accomplishment. And that referral to the ICC was very important. And I'm very grateful to Erwin Kotler for his leadership in that regard. He really helped us along that path. Um, the other is that um, Canada, I'm very pleased to see that after the recent pledging conference about Venezuela, that Canada had agreed that we would continue on and lead on follow-up to that pledging conference so that Canada is still positioning itself as a leader, making sure that the international community does not forget the plight of Venezuelan migrants and the plight of what's happening within Venezuela because it's very concerning and especially in the times of COVID. Um, We've continued to put a push politically so that we've had four, round, four rounds of individual sanctions. It's been against 112 people. And, uh, and the part that sticks out to me the most as well is other key accomplishments. We were able to recognize interim President Guaido. I remember in February in Ottawa, we all came together and Ambassador Vera Blanco It wasn't uh, too long after that we recognized you as Guaido's ambassador to Canada, and it's been a pleasure working with you. So um, I would say that uh, more than ever now, and ever listening to every, everything that everybody has said tonight, we're not going to lessen our focus on this. We're going to continue. More than ever, we need to continue to address this so we can restore democracy, so we can restore human rights within Venezuela and human dignity at the same time. We need to do so by coming together as an international community 
Canada will continue to forge and, and pave that way as well with our Lima Group partners and with others in the international community. And I really appreciate um, the opportunity to just say a couple of words because uh, I wanted to express how important this is to the government of Canada and how much it will continue to be very important to us. So thank you very much, all of you. And I'd like to say I see a lot of familiar faces. It's wonderful to see all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cheryl. I appreciate it. Uh, and now uh, I would like to, to give the word uh, to Mr. Lawrence. Uh, he's an MP, conservative, and he has to go. So please go ahead, Mr. Lawrence. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then echo one of the words of my colleagues who are a part of uh, a different party, but uh, I can say that we are all united in the cause of Venezuela. And I would also just like to extend uh, that I believe that we are all really brothers and sisters, and it's not really for um, Canadians to stand up on a high horse uh, um, and to, to talk down. I think we are all brothers and sisters in the cause of freedom, liberty, and justice. Um, all, all nations are, are merely a step away, one terrible leader away from falling into the terrible path of corruption, of socialism. And, and, and uh, I look forward to continuing our path together to bring back a free and democratic Venezuela. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. and Honorable Philip Lewand. Um And now, uh, we almost done. Uh, Alvaro, I don't know if Mr. Randy uh, Hovac is still here with us. Unfortunately, he had to leave. So you can round up with the questions and answers that uh, the questions that, that were made and you have in your hand. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I would like to ask if anyone from the diplomatic corps present in this meeting would like to express any kind of intervention on the question, please go ahead. Monica, go ahead, please. Monica. Thank you very much. I, I also had some troubles with the, with the mic. Uh, no, thank you very much, His Excellency Viera Blanco and the Honorable Parliamentarians for this invitation. For us, all the subjects related to Venezuela and the people of Venezuela are of the highest importance because we are talking about our brothers and sisters. So we need to keep on working together for the return to democracy and freedom. Exactly 20 years ago, I was posted for the first time. My first diplomatic posting was in Venezuela. I, I had the honor to to be in, in your beautiful country in uh, Puerto Ordaz. After that, I was the consul in uh, Barquisimeto and then in Barinas. And uh, people of Venezuela was already fighting for freedom. So on a personal level, this topic is absolutely close to my heart. I just wanted to mention that uh, Colombia will continue to support the four pillars promoted by President Juan Guaido, an end to usurpation the transitional government with broad and democratic participation, the activation of a reconstruction plan and the calling of free elections. My country also rejects categorically the statements that have been made by the, by the illegitimate Remy, regime of Nicolas Maduro, trying to blame our country for alleged acts of destabilization, which rather constitute attempts to divert attention from the real problems that Venezuela is experiencing through the creation of external distractors in moments of a big internal crisis. For my country, for the government of uh, President Ivan Duque, no solution in Venezuela can be available while Nicolás Maduro is still present. We need to find a way out for him so we can start the transition. Things have lasted longer than we all expected and perhaps longer than we all want. For Colombia, it's not only a honor to work along with the legitimate government of Venezuela, but it's also a moral duty because again, we are sister nations. We are the same people and Colombia, we will always stand firmly along Venezuela and Venezuelans. So His Excellency, thank you for having us here today and please always count with your sisters and um, brothers in Colombia. Thank you, Monica. 
I, you know that you touch a little bit my heart because I have to say thank you for Colombia as well. In the last few months, mm, the, the the residents, the Colombian residents in Ottawa, has been my resident as well. So thank you very much for your warm support. Uh, now, I just want to extend another uh, welcome to uh, a legend. He's a legend. The name is Walter Marquez. He's a uh, Eternal, eternal fighter from Venezuela. Dear Walter, thank you to be here tonight with us. He's one of the, our uh, very big fighter in the International Criminal Court. And Milos, uh, uh, this uh, room is prohibited to smoke, please. So, <laughs> but in any case, now it's an exception. Go ahead with, 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 your, with your question and reflection, please. Abre el micrófono, por favor, Álvaro, al embajador Milos Alcalay. Bueno, Mr. Ambassador, to congratulate you for this outstanding meeting uh, in Canada and to thank the parliamentarians who have uh, expressed the support uh, for Venezuela. My question was oriented to the important presence of uh, our country, our neighbor country from the hemisphere. It is oriented to three aspects. One, what Canada uh, can, I'm speaking in English because Ben Roswell, our very distinguished ambassador, uh, spoke in an excellent Spanish. My English is not so good. I would try to switch to French, which is a little bit better uh, due to the bilingual situation of Canada. But uh, what can Canada do uh, to support more uh, the uh, members of the Caribbean country as a Commonwealth uh, major and outstanding country. And uh, speaking of the uh, Commonwealth, the presence of Canada in other uh, countries where Canada is very, very strong, like in Africa, especially in Africa, and also in other regions would uh, have a bigger impact of the 60 countries that already are supporting us. That is the first thing. The second question to, to Canada would be of uh, how can we prevent a very dangerous situation that we're having, not only for uh, Venezuela, but for all the hemisphere with the presence of Iran, the terrorist movement. The Treaty of uh, Reciprocal Assistance, TIAR, Tratado Interamericano de Asistencia Reciproca, uh, has uh, monitored four important issues. We have spoken one of them, the human rights, which is very important, but also the question of terrorism, the question of narco traffic and the question of corruption. So I think that uh, the characterization of the regime today in Venezuela is not only, of course, priority for the human rights, but we have to see how together with Canada, we can stop this very dangerous situation for the hemisphere itself. And I think that, uh, um, and finally, uh, the presence of uh, Canada, both in the United Nations, but also in the Organization of American States, uh, which has already been very important, the support of OAS. But I think that uh, we can, uh, with countries, I was very happy to hear the representative of Colombia, who has been very clear in the vision, and the representative of uh, Brazil, we have Ambassador uh, Benandria, who is doing a very good work in Brazil. And, uh, and this would be very important uh, to have the support of the General Secretary, uh, which have been of outstanding courage in the uh, identifications of uh, the situation of Latin America and of Venezuela. And the, so the continuous support of Canada that we have received in the past will be more important, and especially with the other neighbor of Canada, I think that the United States is playing a, a very important role in uh, Venezuela and the uh, action uh, of course, with the differences between Canada and the United States, but I think that in this moment, a very strong hemispheric position, Canada can play a substantial uh, work. Merci pour uh, votre attention et merci pour l'appui que le Canada a toujours donné à notre pays. Merci, Ambassador Orlando. Thank you very much, Milos. I, I have to say thank you, Milos, especially as well, because Milos has been some kind of my special advisor since the first day that I became 
an ambassador. So Cheryl, many, many aspects that I just, just contain myself in order to be prudent and everything is because middle say of Orlando keep wild place and acting as a diplomatic, okay? So thank you, Milos, which is one of my mentors. But now I would like to extend the word to Cheryl to answer Milos Alcalai, Ambassador Milos Alcalai, about his reflection. Go ahead. Abre el micrófono, por favor, Álvaro, a uh, Cheryl. Oh, hi, sorry, Orlando. Sorry, could you could you repeat what you'd like me to speak to? Yes, uh, Ambassador Emilio Salcalay uh, just expressed some impression about Canada. So uh, I don't know if you want to give him some answer about his impression and question. Um, well, I would just say that, I mean, Canada is, is, is deeply committed as we ever were. Um, we, we definitely believe that we need to move forward in partnership and, um, and, you know, we need to do that by building the international community and building that coalition. So uh, would you like, if you'd like me to go into something specific, maybe you could tell me which specific thing you would like me to, to drill down on. Mm. No, I, I, I'm just, uh, I'm just looking that it's about the creation of the coalition. Yeah. The coalition in order to get it strong and for strength and try to move forward with Venezuela. We already know that the negotiation and this kind of thing is very difficult to try, you know, to move forward and to step down a regime, which is a criminal regime. So Canada is, is something that we have to learn about Canada. Is mm -hmm. Canada is, a uh, diplomatic diplomatic uh, uh, country which uh, anytime is just insisting about the necessity to recover democracy and freedom in Venezuela on a peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. That is not easy, but it's a good example of a champion in human rights trying to move forward. It is the idea in some way that uh, Milos Alcalai tried to make his intervention as well. So now I don't know if another ambassador, Mauricio, Mauricio, or maybe Mauricio Street, I don't know if you want any kind of question or reflection as well. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, merci beaucoup, Orlando. Thank you for inviting me to participate in this important activity. Uh, as you know, and uh, everybody knows, Chile has been uh, absolutely uh, supporting uh, Venezuela. We will continue on that path. Uh, I think we are all aware that the situation is in our countries, uh, unfortunately, uh, have uh, been uh, uh, forced to internal affairs due to the COVID-19. So we hope that we can uh, uh, go through that uh, big problem and uh, we don't lose the, uh, the, the pressure on, uh, on the regime. Uh, Chile continues, and we will continue working on the on the on the Lima Group. Uh, so you can be sure, Orlando and the Venezuelan people, that uh, we are absolutely committed to the recovery of democracy in uh, in Venezuela. Thank you once again for inviting us, and uh, we will continue uh, supporting your country and your people. Thank you very much, Alejandro. I I have to add that Alejandro is one of the ambassadors here in Ottawa that always is, has been willing to, uh, to, to have a meeting with the Lima Group in order to push harder, uh, in order to uh, put the agenda sitting in relation with Venezuela. Uh, I would like to extend as well uh, my welcome and my gratitude to the commissioner of the, for the recovery, for the asset recovery of Javier Troconis, who is with us tonight here in the meeting as well. Uh, I don't want to maybe to say goodbye before just to extend the last word to uh, Ambassador, uh, maybe still here, Mauricio Ortiz. Mauricio, if you are here, I would love to hear you because Mauricio, the ambassador from Costa Rica, is uh, one of the ambassadors as well uh, who gave me a lot of support in Ottawa and a lot of, of solidarity with the Venezuelan cause of recovery of freedom and democracy. Mauricio is here, please go ahead.
okay, I noticed that maybe Maurice already left uh, Alvaro, right? Okay, so we are almost done. Uh, I'm just uh, would like to to express our uh, expression of uh, thankful and gratitude for all of you to come with us and to share this important uh, meeting tonight. As I as I'm saying in the beginning of this meeting, uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it's not a precedent, precedent situation like this in Latin America and in Venezuela. The situation of devastation in Venezuela, the situation of violence, the situation of violence of human rights is a non-precedent uh, situation. People in Venezuela is suffering. Our children, they are suffering. Our women, our people. People is dying in Venezuela with COVID-19. The regime is using the COVID-19 as a political instrument. The regime is using the COVID-19 to retain our uh, people who is trying to return to Venezuela and manipulate the situation. The regime is looking to make an election, an assembly election in December, looking for uh, just stem down our representation in the assembly uh, under illegal manner. The regime is just a representation of a criminal organization that just kidnapped in Venezuela. And there is a non-president case in the history of Latin America. So we have to keep together. We have to promote the coalition in order to save Venezuelan people. We have to promote all the coalition, all the alliance that we could make in order to asking for universal justice. Justice is freedom. Justice is the representation of peace. We will not have peace without justice. And all of you, Venezuelan people, ambassador, all of you, our uh, uh, human rights fighters around the world, we need to build a final alliance in order to save Venezuela because it's not just about Venezuela. It's about the region. It's about the impact that this situation is just causing in the rest of the region. We're not talking about just about the Venezuelan situation. It's a Somalization of the conflict in the whole continent. It's the impact of the displaced people, the highest level of displaced people in Latin America to Colombia, 1.8 million people in Colombia, 1.2 million people in Peru, 500,000 people in Chile and the counting just keep going. It is an unprecedented situation. We need to keep together in order to push the international justice, the international criminal justice to make an official investigation, a formal investigation against the regime. That could represent a totally change of the table of the Venezuelan situation. We have not to be afraid about R2P, responsibility to protect. It's a non-president situation. I know that it, under diplomatic manner, it's not easy to talk about R2P and intervention, and humanitarian intervention. But Venezuela needed. Venezuela is undefended people, undefended people just trying to struggle with a criminal organization. It's not just a dictatorship. So that is my final reflection. We will keep struggling, fighting every day from justice and to justice. We are not conventional ambassadors. We are activists of freedom and peace. We know that it's not a war in Venezuela, or the statistic, they are worse than a war in Venezuela. The devastation of the economy is worse than a war. The devastation of the human rights is worse than a war. The execution, the disappearance, the persecution, the imprisonment, 
the statistic that Humberto Prado just mentioned, and the brave people of Venezuela resist. What we need, what we need to understand that just undefended people is not a justice fight against a criminal organization. And take the responsibility to talk under this manner because we're suffering every day, our children, our people in Venezuela dying because it's not uh, water, it's not food, it's not medicine. What happened with COVID-19 is criminal. It's not transparency about what's going on in Venezuela. How the regime has no any kind, any kind, any kind of hesitation to use as a political instrument. So it's time to be a little bit more creative, even on the diplomatic basis. So finally, thank you. Thank you, Canada. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Venezuelan people in Canada, all of you. Thank you, Venezuelan people in Venezuela. Thank you to our deputies. Thank you, ambassador, because I feel every day your support and I receive it, and I transmit it to Venezuela. And I know, and I have the conviction, not the faith, the conviction that we're gonna make it. I'm gonna reach freedom. We're gonna reach justice, happiness, and love from Venezuela. Thank you very much. Have a good night, and keep fighting and struggling together for Venezuela. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alvaro. Um, by the way, Alvaro, thank you to my people in the embassy. My passion, just forget oh, my thank people. You. Thank you to our team. Ricardo Romero, Alvaro, my team, Jessica, Sergio, who just, they are both here. Yuska, thank you for Gabi, everyone. my wife. <laughs> everyone, Gabi. everyone, everyone. Everyone. Thank you so much. So, and thank you. Who know me, so now I can talk anymore. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, keep fighting. I see you. I see you soon in freedom in Venezuela. Have a good Solo day. quiero decirles una Have última man. cosa. Dime Gloria ahorita. al bravo pueblo. Gracias. Que va a seguir oh. derribando yugos. Gracias. Yo te bendiga. Buenas noches. Gracias, Cheryl. Gracias.